So, so that means that as software developers, you know, there is some responsibility, some focus that you know, some things that we have to do to make sure that uh, you know, our applications perform well in an optimized fashion on these uh, new, new, you know. For example, this machine is a, is a dual core. Dual core seems very, you know, it's, it's like the order of the day today. Uh, so that that means, you know, that has an implication on JavaScript as well, right? So how do you write JavaScript code which can, you know, leverage uh, leverage the, the modern generation, the new hardware better? Uh, you know, fast, fluid interfaces are absolutely critical today, right? Nobody wants to look at web applications of, you know, previous, you know, I don't know maybe five years ago, right? So we we want, you know, applications that respond instantly, right? something, you want to So then, uh, you know, <coughs> creating, uh, creating JavaScript code, which can provide that compelling user experience is very, very critical. Ah, there we go. So, uh, and then, you know, if you look at many of the uh, APIs that are coming out these days, uh, a lot of them, you know, are basically you know, ideally, you know, we should be able to delegate I/O intensive and CPU intensive tasks to additional cores. Uh, probably not I/O. Uh, I/O can be done asynchronously, but at least CPU intensive tasks, and you know, we should be able to leverage uh, additional cores and additional CPUs and so on. <coughs> So that's why async is important in, in the general sense, right? Uh, with JavaScript in, uh, in particular, you know, what are some of the some of the challenges when we are working with async code? Uh, asynchronous code has this funny, you know, if you write code that's very asynchronous, especially you know if you are working with Node.js, there's a bunch of Node.js that's coming today, right? Uh, so Node.js is like uh, more as asynchronous as you get, right? Because everything happens in a call Uh, and you know, callback madness is something that's very you know very frequently it happens, right? Uh, you know, you do job one, job one gives you a callback, and in response to that, you want to do job two, and that gives you a callback in response to that. You know, so has anybody worked with IndexedDB here? IndexedDB HTML5 spec. Okay, so uh, you know, if you look at the IndexedDB spec, that's like really you know, it's like the it's like the extreme case of callbacks. You know, everything is is a callback there, which is you know, which makes sense because you know you're you're working with the database. Everything is an I/O operation. It doesn't make sense to block your UI thread. Therefore, you know, everything has to be a callback. But as a as a developer, that makes your life really really difficult. Uh, if we have time, which I doubt, I'll I'll show you a little bit of um, you know index DB code to iterate through the records in a in an object store, which is the equivalent of a table. Um, it's it's like you know unbelievably complicated. Um, <coughs> so. Let's look at you know a couple of uh, couple of approaches. So the first thing that we look at is something called as promises. This is basically a, a pattern, right? It's not a not a new technology or anything. It's basically a design pattern that allows you to deal with asynchrony in JavaScript in a somewhat more elegant fashion, right? Um, <coughs> in fact, uh, this is not a new concept. So you know, folks who have used uh, Common JS and from 1.5 onwards, uh, these libraries ship with uh, with promises. They might use different names. For example, in jQuery, it's called as a deferred callback. Uh, in fact, internally, they use the term promise itself. CommonJS uses promises. 
So we'll see what uh, what that is. In fact, most of the session is just going to be uh, going to be demos. So let's straight away go and uh, you know take a look at promises. Maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll build a very simple uh, you know promises framework and see how we can how we can uh, work with that. So I'll just create a a very you know uh, let me just put that into temp. Maybe I'll call this promises 101, right? So it's an empty web application. There's nothing in it. So I'll go, you know, add a, maybe I'll create a folder where I'll put my scripts there. So I'll say add new item. So I'm going to call this promise.js, all right? So a promise, you know, it, it, when you, when you, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a magic trick, right? So when the magician shows it on stage, it looks like amazing. Wow, how did he do that? When it tells you what actually is the under the covers, it's like, what? That's it, right? So it's the same thing happens here. When you look at the, you know, how promises work, it's like, it's like no big deal at all. So basically how, or, or let me show you how a promise is used first. So I have a, I have a project here where, uh, let's see. So <clears throat> this is basically a, a page. Hopefully the internet connection is working. I'll just show you what it does. I have a data card connected here. Maybe it'll work, I don't know, if you're lucky. Great, works. So basically what it does is it goes to Twitter, gets the you know top, the recent 10 tweets which have been tagged with JS Foo, right? So these are some of the tweets that are happening uh, right now. JS Foo is so pretty awesome. So great, people are liking it. So if you look at the, look at the code for this, right? Uh, that's it. So what I'm doing here is basically I have a, uh, a reg very regular table here. Uh, I I'm using jQuery templates to do the, you know, to basically a client side templating to. Oh yes, thank you. Forgot to do that. Uh, so basically, it's a regular table. I just populate that with the tweets. So the code for getting the tweets is that's it, right? So what I'm doing here is there is this object called tweets. I'll show you what that object does. I have a method called get, and then I say then, and I pass a call back here. So, uh, so then is basically, uh, you know, uh, a method that encapsulates a continuation, right? If you're, if you're familiar with functional programming, a continuation is basically an object which represents a callback, right? So basically what we're doing here is we're saying tweets.get, basically, uh, you know, it's a fluent API, right? So you can say some object dot, some method dot, some method dot, and so on, uh, and, and you can keep going like that. So for example, here what I'm saying is I'm calling this API called tweets.get, and I'm saying then, you know, run this function. And here basically I just get the data and uh, apply the jQuery template and it, you know, just goes into that table. Interestingly, you know, uh, it gives you a very clean way of doing error handling as well, right? So if you have, if something goes wrong, you know, you basically, uh, you pass another uh, error, another function, a callback, which basically gets invoked if something goes wrong while invoking that, uh, uh, that particular tweet. Now let's suppose that we want to do something more than that, right? So we want to sequence this. We want to say, go get the top 10 tweets and then you want to do some processing. Maybe I want to store it in a database or I want to do some analysis on it, right? So basically how promises work is they, they compose, right? So I can say then, and then I can keep going like that. So I can say then, you know, go do this. And then I can say then, you know, function, you know, go do something else and, and, and so on and so forth. So basically if you, uh, you know, this style of uh, programming kind of really, really helps when you are doing, you know, extremely, uh, you know, asynchronous APIs, when you're dealing with extremely asynchronous APIs. For example, when you're dealing with uh, uh, something like index DB, or if you're doing Ajax calls as we are doing in this case, then it really kind of helps. So if you take a look at the, the tweet.js file here, it's, uh, you know, that's it, that's all it does. So what's happening here is basically uh, all this is the Twitter stuff. The interesting thing is over this, right? So I create an object called promise here, and uh, what I'm returning from get is that promise instance. Right? I'm not returning the data, I'm not doing anything because the data is going to come sometime in the future. Right? I'm, I'm returning an object which represents uh, the continuation, which represents what is going to happen in the future. Uh, <clears throat> and in, here I basically use jQuery to do the actual call. So make a JSON P call and the interesting things again are here. In the error and the success callback for Ajax, what I'm doing is I'm saying promise.resolve uh, in case it, it goes fine. Right? Again, this API doesn't care who is listening to or what's going to happen subsequently when the data has come. This is like the, you know, a clear separation of that, right? Uh, when I, I'm just dealing with the promise object, the API. The API simply says, I'm done. I call reserve, resolve. Whoever is, uh, if, you, if you are 
familiar design patterns you might be familiar with you know this is basically an observer uh, observable pattern right uh, in fact we'll see that there are commonalities when we talk about rxjs as well where uh, the observer pattern you know make plays a big role um, so that's what happens here and in, in case of error it's just a different signal right here we say if something goes wrong i say error and then the correct callback gets invoked so <clears throat> this is the idea behind promises and now actually uh, it's it's direct it, this particular uh, way of you know doing asynchronous development is directly supported in uh, in jquery so for instance i can actually do away with this completely so this is a promise object that i have implemented instead what i can do is i can simply say return dollar dot ajax uh, so i hope i have included the right versions so i have 1.6 so this is supported from 1.5 and up so this actually returns a promise um for backward compatibility reasons it also returns whatever you know you have all the apis that you are used to having even before 1.5 like error success ajax i mean all the regular javascript apis are available in addition this is a promise as well yeah the second yes in case of er okay uh, this won't get called no because the error actually ends that uh, particular thing right so in that case it won't get called so what you can do is in this case the error handling happens and then let's assume that this was successful and then you know something went wrong here uh, as you know as a second optional argument i can pass a error handler for the second asynchronous call and and so forth so <clears throat> yeah so i can simply do this and uh, you know this 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 code should exactly work uh, as is uh or perhaps not <laughs> the reason is i've used my promise here right so actually what i have to do is uh, i have to create uh, in fact uh, let me not try to debug this online <laughs> i have a few snippets here that i have kept just for this case there you go you're supposed to create a so it's, extra, it's very similar code right so instead of instead of this what i can do is i can say a uh, new jquery dot deferred and then uh, instead of error they call it reject and uh, resolve is actually exactly the same so that's the that's the jquery version of it so you know the exact thing works so basically you know uh, just just different syntax right so i had used promise in jquery you say new jquery dot deferred that's the only difference but let's see what this uh, what this promise actually looks like so let's go back to our uh, promises 101 it's very very straightforward right so if i implement a promise object so the idea is or let's say let's do this function that and yeah yo yeah yeah keep reminding me till it's like hammered into my brain this dot uh, so you can simply say this dot resolve or let's call it on resolve or something is null this dot on error is this and then i can basically go and uh, add stuff to the prototype right i can say prototype dot then equals function uh, resolve error so those are two callbacks that i you know can receive here so in here what i can typically do is uh, i can simply say you know um, probably i'll also add a promise dot prototype dot resolve equals function and a promise dot prototype dot what is that error equals function i guess i'll need the error here i'll need the value here right and here all i need to do is i can simply say if this dot on resolve i simply say this dot oops this dot on resolve of v right and very similar code goes here so if the user has passed a on error then i simply say this dot oops this dot on error of e right and in then all i do is i simply say this dot on resolve equals that uh, this dot on error equals that so this is a very you know simplistic implementation of the promise but you can you can kind of get an idea of what's really happening right so when i write code like you know uh, you know tweets dot get dot then or function something something 
basically when I pass this, you can see what is happening. So tweets.get is actually returning me a promise object. And in then, basically, the internal on resolve gets assigned there. And subsequently, when the, you know, when the Ajax response comes back, I call resolve, right? From the, via the closure, I call resolve on the promise object. So it's, it's no black magic, right? So when I call resolve, it sees if it's there, it calls this, and this particular callback gets invoked. Right? It's really, really straightforward. Now, the only thing, additional thing that we do is, you know, to support chaining, right? So this is basically, I can say then and that's it. I can't chain it to the next then, right? So one additional thing that you can do is, you can actually return another promise from here. So I can say var new equals promise. Uh, so I'll slightly change the implementation because I need to do something in response to in response to resolve. So I'll put that particular if check here. So if I say if this dot on error, I mean sorry, on resolve, then great. Go and call uh, on resolve on that. I guess I'll need the value here. And uh, then I'll also say promise dot resolve, right? And then uh, I'll do likewise for this. Imagine that I just did all that. Uh, you know, I just did uh, of e if this dot on error, then this dot on error of this, then promise dot error. And here I'll simply return promise. So this is exactly the code that we did in tweets dot get, right? It's nothing different. All I have done is in then I've taken the code there and I've basically extended the idea to the next level. So inside then, I create yet another promise and return that from then. The worst case that can happen is you might create one extra promise object which never gets used. So if you, if you let's go back to our tweet uh, solution. Uh, if you go here, so <coughs> I have tweets dot then, right? So then in turn gives me a promise object. So just as get returned me a promise, then returns another promise. Therefore, that is why I'm able to do dot then again. So in fact, uh, so this is the running code. <laughs> so with all the, you know, proper validation and everything. So basically you can see the exactly same thing. So I have resolved error, uh, you know, promise dot prototype then I have on resolved on error. So in this dot resolved, I create my own handler because I need to do a chained invoke of another promise, right? So here I make that call to the, to the subsequent, you know, next, uh, next object in the chain like this. And it keeps going, right? If I say another then, then it just works. Um, yes. Correct. So that is right down here. So when I say resolve, it basically uh, calls this dot resolve dot call. So in this case, this dot resolve refers to my internal function here. Because that's what I've assigned to, right? This dot resolved, I've said this function. That's what this is going to call. When the so let's say tweets dot get calls promise dot resolve, this resolve is going to get called. My internal function is going to get called. Here I'll just you know delegate that to the actual on resolved, which is the callback that the user supplies, and then I just chain it to the next one. If you are if you you know if this seems a little confusing, what we can do is we can just uh, see this is the problem with JavaScript sessions. Already 12:10. So I'll just very quickly uh, do a debugging here and show you what's going on. So I'll put F9 here um, and just refresh the page. So there we go. We hit that breakpoint. Now if I say F11, we go into tweets.get. So that's fine. I'll put a breakpoint here. So F10, F10, you know, uh, whoops, wrong library. <laughs> I think I'll have to go back to our promise object. So that this should be error and everything else should just work. So F12 script. I'm sorry if this is small, I don't think I have zoom here. Uh, so what do you know? This is a JavaScript session and an test for you. So I'll just refresh this. So I'll say F11. Uh, so I create the promise here, nothing, you know, major. So I'll put a breakpoint in the callback for my Ajax call. So, sorry? Oh, yeah, correct. Thank you. And uh, I'll do that. And then we go back. And now then is going to get called right now, right? The callback is going to come sometime in the future, but then is getting called right now. So what did I just do? 
Sorry. Uh, yep, I'm returning the promise. No, not that. Ah, uh, uh. bad bug. You know what? I was just checking if you guys are paying attention. <laughs> Looks like you are. At least one gentleman is. Uh, all right. So nice. It remembered the breakpoints. So do we have everything? Yep. So I'll just refresh the page. Hopefully we'll get it right this time. Uh, so I'll just uh, come out of there. Now I will go into then. So basically, I create this, right? So I'll put a breakpoint there. Uh, and then let's just hit F5. So basically, the success is, you know, the Ajax thing came back. We call resolve. Now uh, we come here. I we go inside. So you can see that this internal function is getting invoked. And uh, we indeed do have an unresolved handler. So I go there. Now this is my uh, the handler that the user supplied. So I do my jQuery template thing and, uh, you know, put it on the user interface. And then here, hap you know, the next uh, chain resolve gets invoked. It goes back to resolve. You know, it's like it's a re-entrant call. And then, so now we can see that uh, the next then got invoked after that, right? The chain call happened. Obviously, I'm not doing anything there. So that's basically the idea. Uh, so yeah, so we're already way past. I wanted to spend 15 minutes on promises and then jump into RxJS. I've taken 30 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> so, because RxJS is much more interesting. Uh, let's let's quickly review what is RxJS. Uh, we have Which, which allows you to do this composition, right? Uh, I know that that sounds very confusing, uh, but this is the basic fundamental idea behind, uh, behind RxJS. So even sources uh, are abstracted as observable sets. They're basically objects that can be observed, right? Basically objects that are a source of something interesting. Right? It should be anything. Which could be, uh, which could be a mouse, right? Which is a mouse coordinator, a keyboard, or, uh, or an Ajax response, right? Or a database call. Or a point to geolocation to get the current back in the So, all these are asynchronous sources of you know, information that you want to. Uh, in fact, it doesn't even have to be asynchronous. As, as we, you know, in some of the demos, I talked about an asynchronous source, uh, just to make it easier, I use a synchronous data uh, for the asynchronous, a static data source, which I use to you know, feed data in my, in my pipeline. Uh, but the idea is there are objects which can be observed, and there are other objects which are interested in the things that are observable. Notifies. So it's very simple, right? You have an observable object which abstracts over an event source and that can notify stuff to observers who are interested in it. So the idea is observer subscribes to uh, what is the observable that they look and interested in getting events from you, give you events, right? And whenever the interesting events happen, it uh, makes the call in your observer and uh, your code runs at, at, at that point. So that's all the, all the PPT I have, so let's quickly take a look at it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I have a little cheat sheet here, which I'm going to, so this is my demo script. I wrote this so that I don't forget stuff. Uh, so I have written a little uh, eval console. In fact, that's not what I wanted to do. I have it hosted locally. I'll go to that one. So basically, this is a, let me just hide this toolbar here. Okay. 
uh, you know, this is basically very, let me just quickly tell you what it does. I can type uh, JavaScript, I can hit control enter and it'll run the JavaScript, right? So I can, for example, say alert, js foo, right? And I hit control enter, it runs it. Uh, but instead of alert, uh, you know, just like console.log, I have a, you know, convenient function here, which, which if I do, it'll basically print it on the right. You know, if I make errors, then it basically, the errors show up on the bottom right. So that's what it does. There are some convenience functions here, which I'll talk about as we as we get there. <coughs> Maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, zoom in a little bit. I know the error error window doesn't show, but hopefully I won't make errors. Um, there's one convenient convenient function called uh, clear, which will clear the log and all that stuff. So <coughs> basically, what I've done is um, let me show you the source for this page. Uh, RxJS, like any other JS library, you know, just a bunch of JS files. I just included two uh, two script SRCs here, right? So I've downloaded the JS, hosted it in my in my website, and I've included it rx.js, rx.html.js. So I'm not using support for jQuery and all. So basically, you know, uh, this is the this is the root JS file that you have to include, and then depending on what other support you want, there are additional modules that you can include as needed. So if you want support for jQuery, then there is uh, rx.jQuery.js, rx.dojo.js, and so on and so forth. Uh, so basically, we can, you know, experiment with, uh, uh, you know, in this console window, we'll, we'll try to explore the RX uh, framework. So we, we talked about observables and observers, right? So let's see how we can, we can go ahead and create one. So for example, I can say observer equals RX, sorry, observable equals RX dot observable dot create, and basically I pass a callback to it. Now the idea is, this particular function is going to be responsible for raising the events whenever, whatever that event is, whatever that interesting event is, this function is responsible for uh, raising that. It accepts one parameter, which is basically the observer, right? Who is the object that is interested in receiving the events that I'm going to raise? So this is the simplest observable observer example that you're probably ever going to see. I'm simply going to say observer dot on next of I don't know 10, okay? And I'm going to say observer, uh, oops, observer dot on completed, and then I'm going to return a function from here. So I'll tell you what all those all these pieces are. Let's let's go ahead and create a create an observer. So I'll say var observer equals right. Uh, in fact, let me do it this way. I'll say observable dot subscribe, and pass an observer as a parameter here. Okay, and I'll say that is my value. And what I'll do here is I'll simply say print, uh, I don't know, print value equals. So one convenience function I have is, so you know, I, I started my career with C++. I love my sprintf. So I got an sprintf port here. So I can do something like value equals percentage d comma v. All right. So when I run it, it prints, you know, value equals 10. So what, what exactly happened here, right? So as soon as I, you know, subscribed an observer, uh, you know, the whole process start, got kick-started, right? The observable got fired, and this particular function got invoked, and uh, <coughs> and on next is getting called. So basically, an observer is very simple. It has three methods on it. So uh, I get these term, terms wrong. wrong. An observer is an object which has three methods on it. On next, on completed, and on error, right? So actually, instead of giving it like this, I could have passed an object here. So this is the common, you know, JavaScript uh, options syntax, right? You can pass an ob you can pass all kinds of things. The API will do the correct thing. So if I pass an object like this, I can say on next and pass that particular function here. I can say on completed, I can pass the a handler here, or I can say on error and I can pass a handler here. Okay, so this is a observer. So subsequently, when we see more complicated examples, you know, just ne you need to remember that. An observer is just this, right? Just three methods on on that particular object. Uh, so what's happening here is when I call on next, basically the on next callback gets called, right? On completed, on completed gets called. So for example, I can say print completed here. Maybe here I'll say print error, and you know it's it's all really really straightforward. Now what is this additional thing that I'm doing here? Um, so this is a very interesting pattern in uh, uh, in RxJS. One common problem with Uh, 
So here the idea is uh, <coughs> the the add observer API will return an object which can be used to dispose or disconnect the connection. That's the idea. So for example, here the idea is I can do cleanup here. So I can say print dispose. Okay. So now if I run this, uh, let me put a clear at the top so that we get a. So when you run this, you say value equals 10. You get completed and then you get dispose, right? So who is calling dispose and all that? The Rx framework is taking care of doing that, right? So the, the, the this particular, uh, you know, observable sequence is completely executed. The on completed got fired. Now it can be discarded. Therefore, it calls this particular function to do cleanup. So, you know, it depends. Like this is a completely useless uh, observable where I don't do anything. But imagine that, you know, you might have allocated some resources here, right? You might have, uh, I don't know, opened a connection to your index DB. So this is a good place to close it. <coughs> so, so that's the idea. So this is the you know the most basic example of a, of a, you know how you can use a observable and you can create an observer and then you can hook them up and do interesting things with that. Now the the RX library ships with uh, a bunch of you know useful. Uh, so I'll just get rid of maybe not all of it. Uh, let's see. But this is this is how you can do it if you want to create your own observer. So there is one helper API like this. You can say return of 10. So if I run this, you know, the exact same thing happens. My observe, observer code doesn't change. Uh, basically, you know, this is just a convenience routine, which does exactly what we just did. So it will simply say observe, uh, observer dot on next, and it will pass the value that I pass here, right? So nothing fancy. So there are a few, you know, helper like this. For example, I can say range of 1 comma 10, right? So here you can see that uh, in this case, what happened was it basically iterated from 1 through 10 and invoke my on next in response to that, right? Uh, again, I, I know, I know, you know, all you guys are thinking, okay, great, so you've done counted from one to ten, you know, <laughs> not very impressive. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, as we as we keep going, you'll you'll probably get to appreciate it. Uh, another thing that another useful thing that I find uh, that you can do with this is you can say from array and you can pass in an array. For example, I can say, you know, pass a bunch of numbers, and if I do that, then it basically trace to that array and uh, and and invokes your uh, observer. Uh, now you can do stuff like this, right? So let's say I have 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, imagine that, you know, I'm, I'm interested only in, uh, so, th so this 1 to 10 that I put, I've hard coded it here, but imagine that this is some event source which is coming from somewhere. Okay, so maybe it's coming from a from a web service call that you're making, right? You're making an AJAX call to some uh, you're making an AJAX call to some uh, you know some service on online that returns the data, and now you can compose on top of this. So for example, I can say uh, you know for example I can say uh, I don't know I can say where function of that v put that there I'll say return v percentage three is zero. So now you can see that uh, my observer code doesn't, you know, change at all. But you can see that only odd numbers are getting printed now, right? Because basically I have, you know, added a, a composition on top of the previous uh, observable, right? So what is what is getting returned here is is a basically you can think of it like a pipeline, right? So the initial from array gives an observable which iterates through the elements in the array, and then there is a where which composes on top of that observable, right? And then it does something extra on top of that. And you know you can you can do interesting things like that. Uh, for example, uh, you know you can you can do uh, I don't know. So dot select. You can project it into in different ways. So I can say return v star v. Right now here you can see that uh, I'm getting the square of all the numbers. So maybe I'll get rid of this filter. So here you can see that you no, know, basically every number got got squared. And then you know you can. You know, as before, I can say where and you know do additional operations on top of that, uh, and, the, and and it goes on like that. Uh, in fact, uh, let me just open the. So I myself, I'm kind of new to the library, but I'm so excited about it. So I want to talk to you guys about that. Uh, if you, I'll just open the. Oops.
there we go so this is the documentation for uh, for this you know it's, it's very very detailed documentation available so these are some of the uh, some of the combinators so this select where that we that we just explored these are called as combinators and look at the list of combinators that are available right it's like a very very exhaustive list of operations are there to do all kinds of things so we'll look at a couple of uh, slightly non trivial demos to see how you can creatively combine all this uh, and do interesting things but there's a whole whole lot of stuff that you can do now so far in this uh, in this sample i was just using static sources right either i just created a one number 10 or i go through an array and so on let's do you know something more real world so let's suppose that uh, you know i want to i want to uh, uh, the the event source for me is the mouse okay so turns out there is a there is an observable that you can create for that as well you can say from html event this takes two parameters the first one is the element that you want to you know observe i'll say document dot body and the second parameter is what is the event so in this case i'm interested in mouse move right uh maybe here what i'll do is i'll change this slightly i'll say sprint f uh percentage d comma percentage d i'll say v dot x v dot y close that close that and that should do it so i've run it now when i move the mouse you can see that uh, it's getting printed on the right right uh so what what is happening here basically a uh, Uh, the mouse itself has been you know abstracted as an observable right and now you can compose on top of that and all of your entire list of combinators can be applied here right so there are some interesting combinators that you can apply for instance uh, this is too much right this is too much uh, of of mouse coordinates maybe i'm not interested in you know getting so much of data what i'll do is i'll just refresh the page otherwise that even binding maybe i can do a dispose right <laughs> but let's do that some other time so i'll uh, i'll just refresh that page now you can do some interesting things so for example i can say um uh, i think i forgot the name of the api okay let's let's try this one first so i can say delay of uh, 5000 milliseconds okay so now i'll just uh, run this now for 5 seconds as i move the mouse nothing shows up there and then it starts showing up right so that's that's a very simple uh, you know combinator it, it may, may, might not seem like much but kind of gives you an idea of the kind of things that you can do right now i'll just refresh that there are there are more interesting things uh, like that for instance uh, i can do uh, sample so what i can do is i can say you know i don't want it so frequently i want the coordinates to come only every 100 milliseconds right now if i run this now as i move the mouse you can see that the frequency is much lesser now right i don't get every single coordinate it samples the coordinate every 100 milliseconds right and you can obviously give different values there so this is basically a concept called as uh, debouncing if you are it's a funny term but basically what it means is i'm not i'm, I'm interest basically it's a sampling sample is a great term right i just want uh, to get the information at specified durations another thing that you can do uh, another thing that you can do is you can you can throttle the even stro even so so i can say throttle let me just make sure i get the thing right uh so you can say uh let's try 500 yeah 500 milliseconds i'll say that not quite the effect i was expecting right so <clears throat> hmm oh wow. that's very slow now i was expecting it to be milliseconds but it's not 500 seconds either <laughs> okay i don't know what's going on sorry ah exactly so that's exactly what's happening um the you know it enforces an interval between two mouse moves to be half a second here right maybe if i try uh, so this good idea we'll do that as well so let's put uh, this here 
how shall we do this what previous state dot now here i can say uh, that i can say date dot now oops minus prev prev equals to dot now i missed something no oh yeah 45 minutes is done <laughs> okay so we'll just do this one thing and we're done yeah so some funny business i don't know so uh, so that that's one thing i want to show you some additional uh, interesting demos which does something more <laughs> fancy than do this but but you get the idea right so you uh, i encourage you to Thank you guys hope it was useful